O Lord, I trust in your merciful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Quite the interesting morning. <laughs> Uh, my name is Father Michael Rossman. It's always great to be back home in the parish where I was baptized. Father Chuck is attending the, the funeral for Monsignor Hendrickson this morning. As always at the beginning of Mass, we take a moment to call to mind our sins and our need for God's mercy, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that, always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in, with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. James. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, because the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes mean yes and your no mean no, that you may not incur condemnation. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, not, nor does he keep his wrath forever. <clears throat> For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came into the district of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds gathered around him, and as was his custom, he again 
taught them. The Pharisees approached him and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. That was the first line of our first reading from the letter of St. James. Of course, it's easier said than done. I've heard of a study that showed that the average person complains between 15 and 30 times every single day. And... I'm one of those people who needs to hear this message, and over the years I've tried to think about, okay, how, how do we overcome this tendency to complain? One question I try to ask myself, but again, I am still in need of this message, is to ask, how might I make a positive contribution in this situation? So whenever I want to complain, I try to ask myself, how might I make a positive contribution in this situation? When we are channeling our energy towards actually doing something good, it can take our mind off of whatever was causing our complaint in the first place. Additionally, that word might is particularly helpful. I've heard it said that you cannot be both furious and curious at the same time. So if we are thinking to ourselves, how might I make a positive contribution? If we're, we're being curious, again, it takes us away from that complaining tendency. Again, of course, it's easier said than done. Um, I heard one person say that, yes, complaining connects us with other people, but that's like getting physical exercise by swimming in raw sewage. Like, there are better, better ways and less toxic ways of doing this. Again, I think trying to help is one particularly helpful manner of doing so. Again, it's easier said than done, but we do not do this on our own. We follow our Savior, who came into our world not to condemn the world, but to save the world and who is, as we heard in a responsorial psalm, kind and merciful. Let's stand and bring our prayers to the Lord. Remembering the mercy of the living God, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who provide food for the hungry through their service and donations, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who recognize thirst in their neighbors and seek to quench it, we pray. For those who seek to purchase clothing from sustainable sources, avoiding sweatshop labor, we pray. For all who provide a safe haven for travelers, especially refugees and migrants, we pray. 
For those who visit the sick, console the suffering, and remember those in prison, we pray. For those who have died and for those who have recently buried their loved ones, we pray. And let's pray in a particular way for the victims of this tornado season, especially the people in Greenfield. And we also pray, particularly today, for safety for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, your mercy knows no end. Grant that we, in practicing the corporal works of mercy, may draw nearer to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim Death, O Lord, grant us your resurrection. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Larry and Bob Ahonik. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is coming into this world.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.